Hello everyone and welcome to the Do More of Your Money podcast, uh, episode 158. Good topic today, um, mistakes to avoid when withdrawn from your pension. So we're just going to talk a little bit about when is it appropriate time to withdraw from your pension and we'll go, we're going to link that in with buying a home, mortgages, etc. We've got a few questions that have, have come through from, from clients recently so we'll try and uh, bring those out. And I'm joined by a, an expert panel today. Uh, all advisors, aren't we? And nearly advisor. We'll talk about you <laughs> passing your uh, exam again, Sophie. But we're joined by Hannah, Sophie, and Tom. Welcome, everyone. All been on the podcast before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sophie, you weren't meant to be on today, so we're going to call it out because Charlotte has asked you to come on right in the last minute. <laughs> she has. So um, luckily, you're an expert, and you don't need to to prepare for these things. Um, guys, let, let's get straight into it. Um, I want to explore a little bit about you know why and and when you should you should take money out of your pension in the appropriate time and i think we'll we'll start off with um we'll start off with, with your mortgage and i think um this is quite a, a a relevant topic for me at this minute in time in terms of uh currently i've i've just renewed my mortgage and we're looking at um we're looking at rates uh, on there and i was i was shocked by the variable rate but actually when you looked at some of the fixed rates it's it's starting to get relatively back to normal so a question I get asked a lot from family and friends and from clients and I believe you probably do as well is should we you know should you pull money out of your investments to pay off your mortgage what's the benefits of that and I think Tom I'll, I'll lead you on it yeah, yeah. and then we'll uh, and then we'll kind of bring everyone in we'll have a bit of a bit more of a discussion around it well just like you I've been sort of looking at my mortgage as well I'm up for a mortgage and I've been tracking this since last year really and we've seen obviously mortgage rates have gone up uh, you know on the whole um but in october time they were at the highest point that they were at and they're around about seven percent at that point and obviously me coming up to be mortgage in june this year i was thinking oh no seven percent seems a lot like a lot higher than the 1.9 percent that i'm on thankfully um you know as things have calmed down in the markets and we've seen guilt yields stabilize a little bit um we've seen mortgage rates drop back down um i have managed to lock in just last week uh, on a on a four point five eight percent, so you can see it's quite a big drop down um, from from the October highs really. Now, when thinking about advice in this sort of area, what we need to look at is your level of risk more than anything. Um, you know, if you think of four point five eight percent, it seems high in comparison to maybe what we saw a few years ago. But in relation to what we've seen in the past, it's actually not that high at all, and it's actually quite a cheap way to to sort of you know loan money effectively because you've got that collateral as as your home there um so you know if you think of for instance somebody who's invested in the balanced portfolio we look at their assumed growth rate of that portfolio and we we should over a long-term period get around about sort of 5.54 percent so that's obviously a higher level of growth than what you'd expect from um, the interest rate on the mortgage and therefore if you've got that sort of level of growth in the, in the portfolio you should be not using that that pension to pay off your your mortgage effectively uh, as a result so it all obviously depends on risk um but the you know the majority of the time you should try and keep invested and 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 not pay off that that mortgage really um and again like i said they are coming down i mean even last month i actually checked because i can keep checking with my uh, provider and seeing how much income down and keep locking in and they're at 4.9 percent so it's it's coming down at the minute which is good and i think it's interesting. I, I was a couple of weeks ago. Dan made a comment about short term sort of thinking when you're looking at this, and this is a long term game. And even with, if you think interest rates are going to be seven eight percent for the next twenty years, then then maybe you should pay your mortgage off. But yeah. the likelihood of, of that exactly. happening is is very uh, very unlikely. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that would be my comment on it. I think the the other area to to think about is that I think when I bought my first house. I'm a little bit older than you, Tom, but when I bought my first house, I was around about, I think it was at around about a 5% fixed rate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was probably about that 5, 5.5%. And then it dropped down to, obviously, the, the lower rates, as that we're seeing now. I think my current fixed rate is about 1.2, 1.3%. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at, I think what we've seen is a long period of really low, unsustainable rates. Because actually, in terms of, of having sort of interest rates at, They've got the Bank of England realistically wants them three or four percent, so they've got that leeway to to decrease uh, if need be. So I think I would expect over the next few years to see a further yeah. drop and probably normalise at that sort of three four percent. Exactly, and I think that again comes down to people who are remortgaging at the moment. Think about your term. Um, do you want to be locking yourself in for a five year mm-hmm. term at the moment when the likelihood is obviously mm-hmm. there's no guarantee with this, but the likelihood is rates will drop mm-hmm. in the next two years. Yeah. 
Um, so normally I always say to clients, look, think about your term because mortgage advisors will actually always try and get you on a two year term regardless to try and get that repeat business. And in the past, say a few years ago, you would have said, look, take the longer term because interest rates are so low, the likelihood is they're going to go up. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the moment, I think one thing I would consider is actually a lower term just because of the fact that we are suspect, you know, ho hopeful that interest rates will Become to come back down again. Yeah, my only last year tied herself into a 1.5% rate for 10 years. It was like the best bit of business <laughs> ever done. Um, and it was, she just wanted to have the same amount of money coming out and she just went for the longest term possible. There was no, I think inflation's going to change or anything like this. Mm -hmm. It was a bit of luck, but it was a, it was an incredible bit of luck. Um, let, let's go to pensions then a little bit. Hannah, we'll, we'll come across to you on this one. So we've obviously got, you, you can take up to a maximum of, uh, on most pensions, twenty five percent of your of your tax free cash, mm -hmm. and lots of um, lots of clients might be thinking, should I take money out of my, you know, should I take twenty five percent off, pay me mortgage, you know, it's tax free, and then I'm not paying uh, on the interest rates. Can we just talk about uh, you know the options from a, a drawdown perspective, Hannah? What clients can do that tax free cash? There's actually lots of benefits in retirement, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think that's the main point. The pension is for your retirement income. Um, but yes, absolutely, you have the 25% tax free cash available and you have the complete flexibility of how to take that, when to take it. So a lot of people think they need to take it all in one go and then have the taxable income in retirement. But that's not the case. Um, it can work really well together. You know, you can, unless you have an immediate need for the funds, it's best to keep it invested and sort of find out how the tax-free cash can work with your um, earned income as well in, in retirement. Yeah, so I um, I was helping a client out, and I have for the last sort of four or five years. Occasionally I, I do give advice because I'm allowed to. <laughs> um, but we, we set up his pension to effectively, was he wasn't state pension age at that point, so we set it up to, to cover his income. And we basically set the maximum amount of income to take to his to his allowance, yeah. and then we a little bit of, a little bit above that was tax free cash to get him to the level of exactly income he needed. So basically, mm -hmm. everything coming out of his pension was was ta was tax free at that point. Mm -hmm. um, the way we set that up, and then once he um, retired, uh, so once he retired and so he'd already retired. Once his state benefits come in, we actually slightly reduced um, reduced that, and the majority of his. Um, money coming out of his pension now actually is tax-free cash yeah. mm -hmm. yes that will run out at some point yeah. um everyone's aware he's aware of that mm -hmm. but actually the um you know we're kind of delaying the last possible time for him to pay tax in the future yeah. Yeah. and the discussion i had with him was around um you know long-term planning you're probably going to reduce your income as you get older yeah so this is a this is a, a better way of doing it rather than because in his head what he was going to do was just take his tax-free cash put it in the bank and I'll just use that for income for the next 10 years. That was his. That was what his th sort of thought process for, because he thought he had to take 25% right up front. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a we, really key point. We always sort of give that advice as well, obviously myself and Hannah on the team, that's mm -hmm. what our advice is normally based off. And, and the theory behind that is, one, you, you're more exposed to sequencing risk yeah. at an earlier age in retirement, so why take out more money from your pension than needed? Mm -hmm. And two, unfortunately it sounds a bit morbid, but you don't know when you're gonna die. Yeah. So you might as well be tax, tax efficient now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously pay tax further down the line if needed when you're probably not going to be spending as much. Mm -hmm. just, to just explain our view is what sequencing risk is, Tom. Yeah, is, so uh, yeah, that I is feel a, like I'm I, I should, you I should have, I should have, no. <laughs> sequencing risk is effectively when you um, take out money uh, when the markets are low um, and it'll have more of a detrimental impact on, on the investment recovering effectively. Um, so with, with that, in the earlier years of your time when you're more reliant on longer term, mm -hmm. If you take the money, if, if the markets dropped and you took a big chunk of money mm -hmm. out, it would have much more of a detrimental impact on actually trying to get yeah. back to where you needed to be. Yeah. Um, so it's just trying to avoid that sort of timing, uh, you know, that timing in the it markets was, really. It was interesting with this client that when I spoke to him again, because I was trying, we were explaining, um, we're kind of going to the next step of his stage, which is his wife now wants to retire. And we're thinking about, do we take more out of his pot until her pension comes in? Or do we start her pension earlier? And there's that sort of conversation. But when we're looking at it, he took something like seventy thousand pounds out of his pot over that period of time. I can't remember the exact year, so I'll not say it. But um, and he was actually only five hundred pounds less on his original valuation at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was just good, good management of his money in terms of he's invested in the correct risk profile for him, but also taking the adequate level of income that he needs. weren't taking too much or too little. It's exactly what he needed in in a good tax plan. And I think this is what this is what you guys will offer offer clients. I think this is where I would always say for your drawdown. Or if you are thinking about taking income out and it's really worth just 
having that initial discussion with the advisor, you might decide to do go and do it yourself, and we'll talk about that later. But mm-hmm. having that discussion with the advisor and, and getting advice is can be really vital in the long term. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's go back to um, let's go back to the home uh, option in terms of withdrawing pension. So mm-hmm. we um, we're going through a. We're going through obviously a position where people want to do things like home improvements yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and potentially, you know, taking funds out of your property, um, you know, sorry, your pension, sorry, to pay for home improvements. What, yeah. what would your advice be on that? Yeah, time? I mean, guidance? obviously, as a long term, you know, uh, asset class, property is a good hedge against inflation. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about that. Um, you know, it typically does perform pretty in line, pretty much in line with equities and bonds in terms of its. Um, you know how much it goes up by, but it's what it's also one of those uh, properties where you know properties in asset class which is completely liquid. Mm-hmm. So if you need to get money on on you know quickly, you can't just sell a chunk of your property, unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, which is very much unlike you know your pension. So another thing you need to consider with property as well is it moves after both bond and equity markets move. Mm-hmm. So for instance, you know we've seen obviously both bond and equity markets move downwards last year. They are starting to, you know, look it looks like they're recovering now. Um, property is expected to go down this year and next year. So mm. the Office of Public, uh, Public Responsibility, they're forecasting about a 9% drop in property values over the next two years. Um, so you've just got to consider that property values will move, but they tend to move after bond and equity mm. markets uh, move. Um, but, you know, it's one of those that if you've got, you've, if you're thinking about potentially taking money from your pension and putting it into your property, you want to be make sure that that money that you've got left in your investments is going to last you. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, clients don't think about that at all. And that's what you've got to put first rather than home improvements. Can you afford to do it long term? Yeah. And you, you've got to also project up to age 100 as well because you don't know you might actually live up to age 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is it. It's worth considering that, that level of income that you require. We're kind of going back to it again. But it's when you're looking at these things and spending your money, and because it's, it's very easy to go, well, I've got this pot over here. I'll take that money out. And... And if, you know, you live in your home, you kind of want to have a nice home. We, we're all in that position. We've all want to do the home improvements. But so once again, it's just worth looking at that affordability and, and what you what you can achieve with that. And one thing I would obviously add to that as well is I've had clients who have had inheritance tax issues mm. that think it's a good idea to take money out of the pension, add it to the property. That's one of the worst things you could possibly do in that situation, really. Mm-hmm. So Hannah, I'll let you explain that then, because that's something we've got here. So benefits of a pension for inheritance? Yeah, exactly. So a pension's held in trust, so it falls outside of the estate for inheritance tax purposes. So anything left over in a pension, it's it's not going to be subject to any inheritance tax and it can be passed down to your beneficiaries as well. Yeah, it's a great product, isn't it? I think we talked about before about it being a retirement product, but I, I find a lot, a lot with a lot of sort of higher value net clients where actually you're best just to not even touch the pension at all. And, and look yeah. at income from other sources. Yeah, that's what we mm-hmm. always look at. Um, um, depleting assets that fall off in your estate first and then move on to your pensions last. Yeah. Pensions are the only product that you've got where you put money in and it's immediately outside of your estate, mm-hmm. effectively. You know, mm-hmm. you can look at trust options, but you've got to still follow the seven-year rule yeah. um, with that. Um, and it's also the well, the product which is, provides the most flexibility as well. Yeah. So you can take money out from it whenever you need. But like I said, it's not a good idea if you've got an inheritance tax issue. Yeah, no, I, t- I totally agree. So... Let's, Sophie, you've passed a pension exam recently, haven't you? I have, on Monday. Excellent. Well, well done. Well done yeah. on that. So how many more? One more? Just one. I want to go. One more. Brilliant. Yeah. So that's the, what will that be, R- R06, which yeah. is the final financial plan. Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah. big one. You have, ask, you have to ask these guys for some help before you, uh, before you do that. I'll be so. annoying them, don't worry. <laughs> um, why don't we um, just talk a little bit about, I know we've changed, we've added some new features to the app this week um, yes. around drawing, drawing money from your pension. So just talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so there's a lot of times where people do want to draw money from the pension and maybe go unadvised, for example, they may have spoken to someone like Tom or Hannah last year and agreed a bit of a plan and it can just be that they're renewing the income they did last year and you know thing, they maybe don't need to speak to an advisor or they already have. Um, so we've added a feature onto our True Potential app where you can request your drawdown on there. Um, so whether this be tax-free cash, income a little bit of both, um, one-off payments, you know, it's really, really flexible. Um, but I think it just sets us apart a little bit rather than having to ring a provider, wait two weeks for them to send you a form out in the post. And, you know, by the time you get, get your money, you've waited six weeks, two months. Mm-hmm. Um, it's literally at a click of a finger and you can give us a call on the customer care team 
um, we, we can help you with it if needs be mm. and you just pop in your details and then um, yeah your payment's on its way really yeah i think it's a it's something we've been looking at a while which is bring a lot of the technology into the app because mm. um a lot of our viewers prefer logging in the app so um given having that functionality in rom go on the website that's that's available now uh, but just speak to your advisor or speak to your team but Absolutely. big caveat for me would be if you're thinking about drawing money out of your pension it's worth always having a discussion with your advisor first um because they are complicated there's no doubt about it and there is other, other benefits um for it uh, let's just talk a little bit about when you should withdraw and what income levels you need um because i think this is you know i touched about a little bit before about required needs but i think it's worth having just how do we how do we look at a client if a client comes and says this is what i want out my pension how do we assess is that affordable mm -hmm. should is is the you know what amount should we be taking out yeah yeah, absolutely. So the, the pensions that we hold, it is essentially a pot of money. So that's mm -hmm. where sustainability comes in. Mm -hmm. um, so we would look and say, what is the requirement need? Um, is what you need realistic? And is it going to be sustainable? So what we tend to look at is the 4% safe withdrawal rate. Mm -hmm. So 4% per annum over the long term shouldn't eat too much into the capital of the mm -hmm. fund. So that's what we'd assess it on. Um, and that's a good way to maybe start a bit earlier and know that if you are still working, are you making the right mm -hmm. contributions? And is that going to be realistic when you do plan to retire? Yeah, yeah, good point. I think this is it. It's, it's up to 4%. And I think this is one of the, one of the things I, I really want to get across is you don't have to just take your 25%. You don't have to just take a thousand pound out a month. Like people round numbers up. It just naturally mm -hmm. happens. Oh, I need 2000 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. It's worth just going in a bit of detail of actually what you do need, mm -hmm. especially if you're retiring, because, you know, once again, these the sorts of conversation I'll have with clients is if you're not working anymore, you're probably not going to travel to work. So it might reduce your travel expenses. Mm -hmm. um, you might only need one car in the family now. That's quite common because that's why people have two cars. But then on the opposite end, you might go on more holidays and do things like this. So when you're looking at your expenditure of what you do need when it comes to retirement, worth just going in that detail of actually looking exact. You don't have to just take random amounts out. And, and also you can, flex it, you can flex it so you can, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to take out a little bit more to start off with and then a little bit less in the future, that's that's quite a common thing. I think that's quite common, Tom, when it comes to people with their state of benefits. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously when you're looking at, you know, looking at this, when, when the state pension comes into play, we do tend to say, look, we'll factor that into account even with our drawdown planning. So, you know, we can sort of look at having a fixed level of income, mm -hmm. obviously inflation proofed as well, um, but you're not just having at 67 or 66 for, for people at the moment, you're not just getting that increase in, in earnings at that point. So we can we can take a little bit more in the early years if you wanted to, obviously within a safe withdrawal, of course, mm -hmm. and then drop that down uh, once you get to, to state pension age. But um, yeah, I mean, I think obviously one thing with that sort of, with that 4% rule as well is, if you start pushing yourself over that 4% consistently, it might, it might be that you can take a little bit more than that, obviously you're gonna factor in it to account your state pension. But if you go over above us, what we see as a safe withdrawal, the problem that you've got is if you do that in the earlier years, it, it then really shoots off mm -hmm. quite quickly. Um, you know, even if you just, you know, lowering the pension down, mm -hmm. you know, year by year, it then becomes exponential really, and, mm -hmm. and you can be really, you know, you can be basing on pension credit effectively if you don't, yeah. if you don't abide to that sort yeah, of Yeah, because it's, 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 it's you're taking out more money, which means you're getting less growth and mm -hmm. it, it affects it over a long period of time. So it's, it's worth considering that. There's some tools on our site as well, though, isn't there, Sophie, where clients can look and set their goals and see the projections forward and yeah. things like this. Absolutely. They can have a good play around with it. Um, it's shown in sort of a, a really simple graph. Mm. So they can put in how much they think they're going to need in retirement per mm. month, when they're going to retire, and it'll give them a bit of a graph to show, well, this is how much mm -hmm. roughly you would need it, you know, in your account at that point. So this is how much you should be contributing per month at this time if you were going to reach that mm -hmm. it even gives them three options so depending on sort of you know the level of risk and the assumed growth as to if it was to go at a two or a six percent rate how much you would need yeah to put in so it does really give you a good idea and if that changes you can go back in you can change the number and um, it'll you know it can, it's not going to make any actual changes to your policy mm -hmm. so you don't need to think here you know you're causing any problems it's just for you to see you know what you would need to put in to get what you need in retirement great and there's other thing I get asked quite a lot is about um, it happens during retirement because when people are leaving work is I've got a workplace pension, I'm just finishing paying into it. How do I consolidate? And is it a good idea to consolidate? So do you want to just talk a little bit how they can do that on the site? So yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're not sure if it's a good idea and you do want to seek advice, 
course, give us a call. Um, but most of the time, you know, it is a good idea, um, depending on circumstances. And if that is the case, you can just do that on the site using a transfer or buy investment option. It really is as simple as saying how much is in the policy, who the policy is with, if there's a policy number, and then that all that details come over to us and we do all the work from there. Um, and then we just keep you updated on how things are going, if anything further was needed. And it'll just pop, if you wanted, in the pot that you already have with Tree Potential. Um, so you can sort of makes it easier for retirement planning as well because when you are setting those goals mm. and things if you've got policies all over it can be a bit hard to do it if they're all in one pot you can really see what you've got to work with and yeah you know, moving forward i think that's the key and i think if you if you're unsure this is the key it's not always in the best interest for people to transfer these pensions so mm -hmm. worth just carrying that a little bit which is seek advice from us we're always here mm -hmm. we can have a look at that for you but i think sometimes when it comes to retirement and you want a little bit of a easier life to manage one pot does make life easier from mm -hmm. a practical perspective but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's so many caveats and pensions as <laughs> yeah, you and I absolutely. know um, that, that have happened uh, over a year so mm -hmm. I have one final question though so Tom so we're going to go a little bit back to mortgages um, mm -hmm. you know when buying a new home is is the mo you know mortgage is obviously the the normal route that everyone would take but mm -hmm. if people have got investments at this minute in time would you still say mortgage is the way forward yeah I mean certainly if, you, if I mean if you look sort of just basing from. it off you know the, the sort of uh, fixed rates that are at, mm. about at the moment they're still pretty good mm. um, and like I said it's a it's a cheap way of you know a cheap debt a long term debt really effectively because you, you've got that you know the, the lender the, mm. the mortgage provider has got that that your house is collateral so you know if you compare it to just getting a normal loan now it's yeah. it's a lot lower rate of interest mm. than what you'd get on a normal loan where you haven't got that um, sort of collateral really um, yeah and I think I, I, my experience to get the mortgage, I, as I said, I just, I'm porting my mortgage across. I was talking to you guys about it before. My experience of it from my provider, which is one of the banks, was superior. I, was, I, was, yeah, I couldn't get over how well. good the service was. Um, it was from that perspective. I, you know, they were, they were pretty good at it. Yeah, they, they seem to have like, you know, almost sort of followed what we're, what we're doing and, yeah. and gone a bit more digital now. Yeah. And obviously, cause we're, because you know, we're all so used to being digital based, I was quite impressed that they were mm -hmm. they sort of following the same it's, suit, which is good. It was yeah. same as me, because when I, I spoke to the, uh, the initial person on the phone and it was, you, you've got to speak to a mortgage advisor, um, here's your option. So if, although I know, I know lots of mortgage advisors, I <laughs> report on the same mortgage, I had to keep with the same provider. Um, and it was, you can do it via Zoom or you can do it coming out of branch, which mm -hmm. is, I don't know where there's an HSBC branch anywhere, <laughs> quite frankly, yeah. like, do they exist anymore? <laughs> um, so I'll do it over Zoom and it was done within 45 minutes, so they, yeah. they digitalised a little bit, um, which is exactly the way we present our to our clients, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and we have done for many, many years, so they're, they're trying to catch us up a little bit, <laughs> uh, but it, it was pretty good. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll, we'll kind of finalise there, so, you know, what to avoid when we've drawn with your pension, I think there's a couple of things that we discussed. In terms of paying off your mortgage, is it a right idea? In terms of looking at fixed rates and actual current rates at the minute, and I think we kind of come to a consensus that it potentially isn't, mm -hmm. uh, but it depends on people's circumstances. And then we kind of looked at um, realistically the best ways of taking money out of your pension and mentioned about inheritance tax and some of the benefits of having pension, but also you don't have to take your full 25% out. Mm -hmm. And I think I've repeated that a number of times on podcasts, but yeah. it, it, it's so common when I speak to clients that they think they have to take the full 25%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the most common things I hear. So I, I think it's because they get mixed up with defined benefit pensions. Yeah. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's you can really make uh, your tax-free cash if you're paying it out as like a, a regular amount last for a long long time yeah yeah um and it, it can be really beneficial in retirement so mm -hmm. speak to an advisor that's honestly that's all i would say to, to all our viewers speak to an advisor about that and we'll be happy to help mm -hmm. uh right guys thank you very very much you got lots of pension meetings after this uh, oh podcast, yes unfortunately <laughs> yeah, I know we're, I know we're coming unfortunately up. sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry Doug. i think I think we're, uh, we're obviously going to tax year end to a very busy time for us. Is, so yeah. we're, we're talking about filling people's ices and pensions um, <laughs> as, well as, as well as a bit of drawdown. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's always good. A little plug at that, though. If you, if you haven't um, completed your allowance yet um, in your ice or your pension, uh, worth speaking to the team and, and getting that done or using your impulse save and, or your client site. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a short period of time. How long have we got left? I don't know. what they, Just less than a month. Yeah, less you than only a month. Get, so it's worth, it really is worth um, looking at and doing that. Uh, so please, uh, please log on the site, use your impulse here features or speak to your advisor. Um, you only get one opportunity. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Hope you all have a great weekend. 
um, and a rest of the day. And thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.